Hey you guys, I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, shout out to Chi Chi, the little lip butt down in Dallas. He gave me this idea. He's One of his questions the other day was on margin call. What is margin call? So today I'm going to explain to you guys what margin call is for all of you um, Robinhood Gold members. So if you look at, let's say, the socks that I like looking at, one of them is uh, Whiting Petroleum, so WLL. If you have uh, Robinhood Gold, you're going to notice that there's two new features down here. These two numbers. The first is the initial requirement for WOL is 56%. What that means is initially when you buy in, 56% of the cost needs to be financed by you. And Robinhood will only finance the other 44%. You cannot buy it if you only finance 55%. So that it it, um, it locks in a certain amount of number of shares you can buy, okay? And the next number that's important is the maintenance number, maintenance requirement. What that means is of the total worth of your current shares, you have to own more than 45% of it. Uh, if you own less than 45, they're going to give you a maintenance call. What that means is you got to input more money so that your proportion is more than... 40 more than 45 or you got to sell your shares so that your proportions greater than 45 again and that's a bit confusing it took me a while when i when i started investing but i'm going to show you guys a formula i created and then you can see visually what it what it looks like so i've made if you remember this is whiting uh, vol volatility medium 56 percent for initial requirement 45 percent for maintenance requirement now I translated that over to an Excel sheet. As you can see, whiting, medium, 56%. What that means when you buy, 56% needs to be financed by you. Requirement, you need to, like I said, you at least 45% of what you own has to be financed by you, not by Robinhood. And the initial price is just what I translated, the price of um, WOL is just what I transfer over from uh, Robinhood. It's just the current price, okay? So in this case, we're going to work with um, an account with this. Realistically, this can't happen because you need at least 2000 for margin. But for calculating, I use a uh, 1000 account, uh, $1,000 account just to make it easier for us to comprehend. So $1,000 total buying power is 2000 The reason why is remember it's two times cash, whatever you have, Robinhood will offer up to that amount. So your total buying power is 2000 but you only have 1000 Now... What's going to happen when we buy 150 shares, okay? When we buy 150 shares, the total cost will be $136.50. What does that mean? That means 1000 will be financed by us. $336 will be financed by Robinhood. And our initial requirement, our initial, um, invest, our initial investment is 74.82%. And how we calculate that is by taking the account balance, which is here, dividing that by our total cost, which is this. And that's how we get 74%. Because out of $1,336 spent, 1,000 of it was ours. Let's see what happens when we increase it. Let's say we want to buy 250. It won't let us. See, I uh, put in a conditional formula for this so that every time it drops under 56% up here, it goes red. So as you can see, at 250, the total cost will be $2,227.50. What that means is you're going to need to borrow $1,227. And what you're financing out of the 2200 is only 44%. So it's under 56% and they're not going to let you do that. So the optimal number we want right here is going to be 200 At $200, you're only going to borrow $782. What that means is you're going to finance 56.12%. And you get that number by dividing 1,000, your initial balance, by the total cost. So your total share is worth, okay? So let's say you're in this case, you're, uh, that's what you decide to do. You buy 200 shares. Now, the next thing I want you guys to look at, so that went through, okay? So this is good. You're good to go. Now, this is what maintenance is about. How maintenance work is they use a calculation of current price, subtract borrowed, divided by current price. So current price, subtract borrowed uh, money, what that means is how much of it is yours, divided by current price, 
or total current price, which means how much of what your total portfolio is worth is actually your financing. And we're going to put in the example for that. So we'll start with the same as what the top number is, 8.91, which is going to give us 56.12%. So our maintenance is still the same. Now what we want is this number to always be above 45 because that's the maintenance requirement that, that Robinhood has set for us. That means that if our account is less than 45%, they're going to give us a call. And I'm going to show you guys what happens. So let's say prices goes up to $10. Your maintenance is actually 60.90%. What that means is out of this at $10, your uh, portfolio is going to be worth $2,000. And what that means is 60.90% of that is your money. Okay, 60.90% of that is your money. And how you get that is just the difference of this number. This is how much you borrowed and this is how much it's worth. So that would be $1,218 out of 2,000. And that should give you 60.90. So as you can see, if this number, if your shares goes up, you're fine. The, the more it goes up, the bigger your financing percentage is. 73%. Now what do you what happens when it goes down? Remember it starts at 8.91. I'm going to show you what happens if it goes down to $8. At $8, your maintenance is at 51%. So as you can see, you started at 56, but now you're at 51. But you're not low enough to 45 yet where they have to call for a maintenance call, okay? So what happens when it drops to let's say $7? It's red. The reason why now you're at 44%. 44% of what your total is, is what your total amount is, is what you finance. So like I said, you calculate that by if you look at 1,400, of that 1,400, $782 is borrowed. So the remaining amount is what you finance, which is 44%, but Robinhood's going to require 45%. So in this case, they're going to call you either sell some of your shares or you can pump in more money. But that's pretty much maintenance call, guys. Some companies, the way Robinhood has it, some of them have different initial requirement and maintenance requirement. Let me see. I'll show you some. So if you look at a company that's more, this is a medium company, so the numbers are closer together. If you, you look at, let's say, this company where it's high, now Robinhood is not going to even bar lend you money for a high volatility stock. So initial requirement is 100%, maintenance is 100 that means you have to finance 100% of it. They're just not going to lend it to you. And that's the same with the company that I own right now, BCEI. Same thing, 100%, 100%. Okay? However, if you look at a company that's less volatile, like... This one right here, this is a continental resource, volatility low. Your initial requirement is only 50%. You don't, not as high as Whiting at 56. And even lower is your maintenance because it doesn't, it doesn't uh, move that much. It's not that volatile. So your maintenance is even lower. And that's about it, guys. That's how you calculate maintenance. Just one more time. Initial requirement is going to be initially when you buy in, how much of it has to be financed by you and maintenance requirement means at any time you need to be able to finance at least 45 percent of what your total share is worth if it's less than 45 percent they're going to call you and then you got to meet your uh, maintenance requirement so some of the strategies i use i remember when i started with scott trade one of the things that frustrated me the most is for instance like this when I went in, I would max out at 200 and hit my 56%. I wanted to use as much buying power as I could. But as we know, sometimes the socks we buy doesn't go in the way that we want it to, whether it's up or down. And in this case, you know, if you buy it at $8.91 for 200 shares, you use the maximum. And let's say your shares hit $7. If you don't have any money on the side, you can't even wait for it to come back up. If you can't pump in more money, you got to sell shares. And I got to tell you, that's the most frustrating thing when you're investing. When they give you that maintenance call and they're telling you, you got to cover. You got to cover because they're not going to lend you any more money. So what I suggest is if we if we look up here, let's say you have $1,000. Um, with $1,000, if you buy, let's say you just buy 
160 shares, okay? At 160 shares, you're only borrowing $425. This way, it gives you more leeway for prices to go up and down, um, such as, let's see what happens when it goes. We bought at $891, but even when it drops to $6, you're still at 55% maintenance. Let's see what happens when it drops to $5. You're still good to go. As you can see, you know, if you buy slightly a bit less, what that means is you're going to borrow a lot less. And how that works is that means your prices can uh, go up and down without it forcing you to sell. And like I said, if you if you day trade, that's fine. If you buy and sell within the day, but if you hold for a week and for some reason, whatever you're buying in goes down and you want to hold it just a bit longer because you know it will come up, that's the most frustrating thing that happens at least in my case they'll call and they'll make you um, they'll make you cover even though you just want to wait one more week and it's happened to me before with uh, Netflix where it went down and they made me cover and I knew it was gonna come up but I didn't have any money in on the side to pump uh, to pump me in to cover my margin what I ended up doing was selling a large portion of my shares to meet my margin and the next week it went up again and that, that's just so frustrating for me so keep that in mind when you're doing margin. If anyone want this uh, formula to play around with this Excel, just uh, drop your email down below in the comment section and then I'll just email it to you. And if you guys find this video helpful, please smash that like button, share it and subscribe. Thanks a lot guys.